Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dread Time Stories. I'm your host, Dr. Phobia. And tonight, dear patients, it's been a while since we've done a literary series. So, I figure it's long overdue. Now, I want to do one that is actually very near and dear to my heart. So, you're actually going to get two stories tonight. And an extra long intro. Because I want to read you the little subtext to the beginning of this wonderful literary series. Welcome to Haunted Ohio. There you'll meet the vengeful spirit of an Indian who only wanted his skull back. A haunted garden party dress. A ghostly prisoner doomed in her own private hell. A long dead actress who still takes curtain calls. A bereaved mother who searched eternity for her baby. And the headless motorcyclist of the Great Black Swamp. If you fear what you cannot see and what you cannot explain, if you are haunted by which logically should not exist, then visit that altered state of consciousness in haunted Ohio. Number one, the haunting husband. A large percentage of bereaved spouses believe that their loved one has not abandoned them completely. They report seeing, feeling, or sensing a beloved presence. My grandmother said she would feel like my grandfather's hand was still in hers, linking them between their two chairs in front of the television. Such manifestations can bring feelings of joy and protection to the survivor. From Columbus comes the story of a husband who continued to watch over his wife after his death. The house is a two-story brick built in 1903, hidden behind two tall pine trees. It boasts the original dark wood, carved art brass doorknobs, and a stained glass window picturing cascades of luminous purple grapes worthy of Tiffany himself. Mr. and Mrs. Harmon lived there for over 40 years until Mr. Harmon died in the 70s. Devastated, his widow put the house up on the market at below its real value. A construction worker named Fred Albert snapped it up, assuring her that he would take great care of it. Mrs. Harmon moved to Florida, and Fred did not hear any more from her, but he did hear from Mr. Harmon. Fred, bearded, burly, and down to earth, lived by himself and was not in the habit of imagining things. But one evening, he was sitting in the living room and he felt someone standing in the room with him. He turned around and saw a dark area, darker than the surrounding air. The more he looked at it, the stranger it got. The hair on the back of his neck stood up, and if he looked at it hard, he could make out the form of a man. After that, the apparitions appeared quite often. They appeared upstairs in the hall, or sometimes downstairs in the living room. Gradually, Fred got used to sharing his house with Sarge, as he called the ghost. Fred loved the house and didn't want to get rid of it, though he did wonder if a ghost was a real estate defect that needed to be disclosed by the seller. Fred sometimes rented out rooms to students from Ohio State University. Naturally reluctant, he never mentioned the ghost to any of them. He didn't have to. Most of them came to him, timidly inquiring whether or not he felt or noticed anything. Steve asked him point blank, is there a ghost in your house? He had seen the darkening air repeatedly. When Fred got married, he didn't tell even his wife about the apparition, but she saw it and was terrified. 
Caitlin, a guest who had spent a few nights there, had only heard some vague rumors about the ghost. She couldn't sleep for strange dreams, and being awakened by the door to her room bursting open violently. Unperturbed, Fred said that it was due to unequal air pressure. One day, Fred suddenly realized that his ghostly companion had been around for quite a while. The house felt a little lonely without Sarge. Slowly after this, Fred was puttering around his backyard. A neighbor woman who had kept in touch with Mrs. Harmon called over the fence. Mrs. Harmon just died in Florida, she said. Fred then realized why Sarge didn't keep an eye on the house anymore. His sweetheart had finally joined him in the other world. Story 2. The Lonely Ghost Unrelented love can kill, and it can bind a lonely spirit to earth. The Reynolds family in the Salem Mall area of Dayton knew they had a ghost. Things had been going on for quite some time, and a strange figure could be seen at the corner of the eye, or mysteriously moving objects. The Reynolds children in the house could actually see the spirit. But who's that person standing there? They would ask, to the bewilderment of their parents. The last straw finally came when Mrs. Reynolds was cooking chili for dinner. As she stood stirring the spicy smelling stew, she felt someone pinch her bottom. Then psychic investigator Rich Strong was called in. He said the family was surprised at how low key he was. The family was expecting something sensational, a seance with ghosts materializing and who knows what else? Rick picked up information about the room and how it used to be. He kept getting a startling picture of animals in the kitchen area, and he couldn't figure it out. The Reynolds laughed and told Strong that the house had stood empty for quite some time, and a deer had strayed into the kitchen. A ghost had strayed into the house as well. It turned out that the previous occupant was a lonely lady who had been disappointed in love. She was very sensitive, which is why she didn't like the strong smell of the chili. She was a very well-mannered person, very ladylike. She was a poetess. Her lover marched off to war, but never returned to her. Because he never came back, she lost all faith in her religion. Bereft of God and her lover, the woman sat by her window, watching people go down Salem Avenue. She watched until she was a shadow. The sad, lovelorn ghost knew that there was no record of her existence. She had written poetry, but no one read it or remembered she had written. She just wanted to be recognized, to have it said that she once existed. She liked the children, and they liked her. She said, wistfully, which is why they could see her. Fine, said Strong, but you're scaring Mrs. Reynolds. Would you please go? Strong performed what is called a soul rescue, where spirit guides are called in to lead the lost one to the light. Strong stresses that this is not an exorcism. The main message I'd like to get across is that ghosts are not scary. They are just regular people who are all dressed up with no place to go. Their mind is more on what's here on earth than there. As the poetess bound herself to earth by her intense longing for her lover, and with... As the poetess bound herself to earth by her intense longing for her lover, when with a little faith she could have easily joined him. Since Strong's visit, the Reynolds haven't heard from their ghostly poetess. Perhaps that lonely spirit has been reunited with her long-lost lover beyond the veil. There is no marriage or giving in marriage in heaven, but there is love.
Well, there you have it, dear patients, two stories from the Haunted Ohio series. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for listening. Like I always say in closing, check under your bed, look in your closet, and sleep with the light on. The life you save may very well be your own. Good night, everyone.